Hey guys, Ruckus Gaming here, coming at you with another episode of Tuesday Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to finish our silent card tier list series by looking at rare cards. As always, the tier list maker images are a little outdated. I have had some comments about those. I am not really ranking them based on previous patches or anything like that. So you may have seen some details on the cards that aren't quite right, some energy cost or some of the uh, effects of the cards might be a little different because they're based on an old patch. I'm just not going through and resubmitting every single card all over again. I'm just using what's there. But without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. First up, we have the Rare Skill Adrenaline. Gain one energy and draw two cards for free. Or if you upgrade, gain two energy and draw two cards. And then, of course, exhaust. This is going straight to S tier. This is an absolutely amazing card. Incredibly versatile. It works in any kind of deck, no matter what you're doing. And it gives you two of the most important things in this game. Energy and draw. This is a great way to just turn your deck on. Sometimes you need just a little extra juice to get that set up or to finish that combat quickly and Adrenaline will get that job done. Always take S tier. Next up we have the Rare Power After Image. Whenever you play a card, gain one block and upgrade to gain two block. I'm going to throw this in A tier. I think obviously this will shine in decks that play a lot of cards. And I do think you may benefit from having more than one of these. Just one after image is not really enough, especially if you're going for the heart. But if you can get two of these, that is a very, very solid block plan. And even with just three or four energy and a couple normal card plays that could end up being perhaps eight or ten block if you've got several copies of these so definitely worth taking especially if you can get another one by maybe getting question card or prayer wheel visiting lots of shops hitting up lots of elites for a higher rare chance if you get one of these, you should definitely be digging for another. Next up is Alchemize. This will grant you one random potion, and it upgrades to be zero cost. This is also going straight into S tier, another very, very strong card, and one of my absolute favorites for the silent. If you have this, you should always be using potions every single fight. And you should always be trying to stall a fight until you have a free potion slot so you can get another one in there. Of course, this is going to make your combats easier, but it also means by looking at more potions over the course of a run, you have a much better chance to find those super high tier, very valuable potions. Things like a ghost in a jar, maybe fairy in a bottle, duplication potion, liquid memories, all of those potions that can make a huge difference in some of those tough fights. You definitely want to be digging for those. And then once you have them, you can sit on them and use them at the right time. But definitely, definitely, once you have Alchemize, you should be maximizing the use in each combat. Next up, we have a thousand cuts. Whenever you play a card, deal one damage to all enemies, and it upgrades to deal two damage to all enemies. I'm going to throw this in C tier. I think we often want a thousand cuts to be better than it really is. Of course, this does really want a deck that can play a lot of cards per turn, clearly. But it's a little bit expensive for two energy and generally just a little underwhelming. Unless you can perhaps multiply this with a nightmare or maybe you've got Sneko or just lots of extra energy that makes the two costs a little bit easier to deal with. It 
usually is kind of a win more card in a lot of ways. If you've got a deck that plays a lot of cards already, you're not going to have a lot of trouble dealing damage because you may be infinite or at least near infinite. But it can speed up the time to kill and get out of that combat by giving you a little bit of extra AoE damage. And that is something that I think a silent really would like a little bit more of. There's some AoE in her card pool, but not as much as some of the other characters. Next up, we have Bullet Time. When you play Bullet Time, you will not be able to draw any more cards for the rest of your turn, but all of the cards in your hand will be free to play. This starts off as three energy and can be upgraded to two energy. I'm gonna throw this in B tier. Obviously, this is gonna work great in silent decks that can build up very huge hands. And that's not necessarily very hard to do. I think she has a lot of tools for drawing cards, acrobatics, backflip, etc. The drawback is that it will end your turn, essentially. You're saying, I'm not going to be able to draw any more cards. So it can interrupt the flow of some decks that do prefer to just keep going keep using acrobatics keep using prepared you know if you've got tactician and reflex bullet time is not really what you're looking for though it could perhaps serve as a finishing card not directly but if you have gotten an enemy to low enough hp this could be a viable way to draw a bunch and then play a bunch and use that as the final turn of the combat. Next up is Burst. Once you play Burst, that means this turn your next next skill will be played twice. And if you upgrade it, your next two skills will be played twice. This turn only. So I'm going to throw this in A tier above after image silent has a lot of absolutely fantastic skills you could use this with something like alchemize or adrenaline for a huge boost you can use this with catalyst you could use this with backflip i mean there are so many absolutely amazing skills that silent really really loves to play and playing them twice is just amazing i think any card that says twice or perhaps even triple in the case of catalyst that should be a huge green flag getting free card plays playing your best cards multiple times for the cost of one is just super super powerful i think it's not quite a tier because it is only this or it's not quite s tier it is a tier it's not quite s tier because it only affects cards played this turn i think there are some other cards with similar effects that will uh give you a buff that you can carry over into the next turn though i'm kind of blanking on it right now however the main issue is the cost especially if you get this unupgraded playing one a one cost card to then double another you know perhaps one cost card it just seems like maybe there might be a better way to spend that energy it really really does want that upgrade if you've got a toxic egg or you have the ability to get to a campfire quite quickly and you have excess fires you're in good shape hp wise you don't have other cards that need upgrading definitely definitely snap this up i'm happy to see this in just about any deck as it is just because her skills are so varied though there are some things it may not necessarily work with uh, i think sometimes with blade dance you run into the problem of filling your hand up you can't actually get all those shivs in there you're throwing shivs into your discard pile and drawing them later other skills like concentrate maybe you know you don't really have the ability to double all of her skills but almost all of them 
and especially those high tier skills that you build your deck around will benefit greatly from having a burst in the deck. Next up is Corpse Explosion, and this is, I think, easily my favorite silent card. This is going straight to S tier as well. The thing that I love about Corpse Explosion is that this is a poison deck that works in any deck because it's not really a poison card. Or I said poison deck, didn't I? This is a poison card that works in any kind of deck because it's not really a poison card. This secondary debuff that it gives, once an enemy dies, it will deal all of its HP as damage, its max HP as damage to all enemies. That is what you really care about. The six poison, not a thing. This can work absolutely fantastic in any kind of silent deck. If you're running shivs, if you're doing a grand finale, if you're doing a poison deck, just knowing that in any given multi-enemy combat encounter, you really only need to kill one of them. Because if you can kill one of them, you're probably killing all of them. Now, of course, if there are minions, they're not gonna do all of the HP or all of the damage to kill, you know, Reptomancer, they're only 25 HP daggers, but they're gonna take out all of the daggers. And the nice thing is you can actually use this with burst and you can double that debuff. So if they have 25 HP and they die, they will deal 50 HP worth of damage to all the other enemies. Just a great, great way to get out of really tricky fights that have you looking at multiple enemies by simplifying them and kind of turning them into one enemy combats. Next up, we have Die, Die, Die. This will deal 13 damage to all enemies and then exhaust. This is one of the silence few ways to do AOE damage, but I just don't think it really holds very much weight. This can be very good in the Act 1, but as the enemy HP starts to scale up, this is going to be less and less of a really big difference maker. It might help against minions and things like that, but when you're looking at Act 3 enemies that have hundreds and hundreds of HP, Die, 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 just kind of falls off as you go up the spire. So for those reasons, I'm going to put it in C tier. Next up is Doppelganger. This X cost card will allow you to get extra energy and extra draw based on how much you have, how much energy you have when you play it. If you upgrade it, it will be X plus one. So you can play this even if you have no energy and you will still get some benefit from it. I do think it very, very, very much wants that upgrade so you can always play it no matter what. Feels pretty bad when you draw it in a hand full of other things you really want to play and you just can't get anything out of it because your energy is already spoken for. That being said, if you do have extra energy, I think this is extremely powerful and it can lead to some big, big turns. The problem is that the Silent doesn't have quite as many ways to get that extra energy. This is kind of one of them, but it's like you need the extra energy already to get a lot of use out of it and get more energy. Things like Concentrate could be useful, but as I've said in the past, it's one of those cards that you may not always want to pick up immediately when you see it. It does need some support. It's kind of like taking an accuracy before you have shivs. You will also be taking draw later in pretty much any kind of deck, but it can get in the way until then and be kind of a curse. So I'm just gonna put this in B tier and I'm gonna put it at the top of B tier. I do really like this card when I can pull it off. Next up, we have in Venom. This rare power will give one extra poison to an enemy for every time you attack them and deal unblocked damage. 
This is the very definition of a win more card in my book. This doesn't really do very much if you aren't already in a very good place. And it's not really even necessary in poison decks. If you've already got tons of poison, a little bit more poison is not going to make a huge difference. If you're running a blade dance shivs kind of deck where you are making lots of little attacks, it's still probably not going to make that much of a big difference because you're not going to have other supporting pieces like Catalyst or Bane or Noxious Fumes. And the little bit of poison damage you end up accruing as you shiv an enemy down is probably going to pale in comparison to the amount of damage the shivs themselves are doing. So, for that reason, D tier. Worst silent rare card easily. Just not necessary. It will speed up a combat if you've got a really nice deck that it jives with well, but if you're already doing very well, then it's just not that necessary, and it's kind of expensive. Next up we have Glass Knife. This attack will deal 8 damage twice, but then subsequent attacks will deal 2 less damage each time this card is used, so it's going to get a little bit weaker over time. That being said, dealing 16 damage for a 1 energy attack is pretty good, especially early on in the game. This is a great Act 1 rare to pick up that will help you, you know, if this is uh, something you see at your first Elite, I would definitely snap this up. It will, of course, get worse each time you use it, and it will, of course, kind of fall off as you climb higher up the spire, but I still like this card quite a bit, and I'm going to throw it in B tier. Next up we have Grand Finale. This card can only be played if there are no cards in your draw pile, but it will deal 50 damage to all enemies, upgraded to 60 damage. The main issue with Grand Finale is it is just incredibly hard to pull off unless you build your deck around it. If this is a very early rare that you see in Act 1 and you have the ability to take what you need to make it work, that's great. Or if you already happen to be going a kind of draw, discard, deck manipulation style kind of run, then this is exactly what you will be looking for to kind of speed up those combats, otherwise they may be quite long. Even though it is incredibly, incredibly powerful, I think the narrow path that it has to be useful, the fact that you need to have an incredible amount of varied draw, you need to have acrobatics and acrobatics plus, you need to have prepared and prepared plus, you need to have a backflip, you need to have reflex, so no matter how many cards are in your draw pile, you have a high chance of being able to draw the correct amount. If you've only got acrobatics or two acrobatics and your draw pile has four or your draw pile has one or two, then you're never going to be able to get this off. It's a really finicky style of play, very, very unique style of play. So despite it being a very, very powerful card, I'm throwing it in C tier just too narrow of a path to get to that win condition. Next up we have Malaise. This is another X cost card. Enemies will lose as much strength as energy you spend, and secondarily, you can also apply that many stacks of weak to the enemy. This is very, very good. It's great for taking care of multi-hit enemies. There are many of those, especially in Act 3 and 4. Whether you're thinking about Time Eater, you're thinking about Donudeka, thinking about the Heart, etc. Being able to make their very dangerous multi-attacks 
much, much weaker makes the combats much, much stronger. Or makes this card much, much stronger. I would say it obviously would benefit very well from an upgrade as well, so it is X plus one cost. But either way, I am throwing this at the top of A tier. You might have a little bit of trouble getting that extra energy to spend on it, but if you do, or if you just find a turn where you are lucky enough, you have already done your setup, the enemy's not attacking, you've got extra energy to spare, throw a malaise in there, and that's going to make the combat very easy to survive. You can stall out, you can spend more time blocking, you can make sure your setup is good, and then once you're ready, end that combat. Next up, we have Nightmare. This three cost card will copy another card in your hand. And on the following turn, it will add three copies of that card into your hand. This is going to be another S tier card. I think it's a very intimidating card at first because of the cost. You would really like to upgrade it to be a two cost card. And it can be a little confusing to understand how to really make this work. It may feel like you're wasting this turn and then you're getting three cards, but you may not be able to actually play all three of those cards. You may have other cards you want to play. It is just a little counterintuitive, but the simple fact is there are so many strong, strong silent cards that you want to have multiple copies of. Having multiple copies of Wraith Form, having multiple copies of After Image, Adrenaline, Alchemize, all those are great targets. And then you think about something like Apparitions. If you can multiply your Apparitions, you can extend combats as long as you want. And if you've got two Nightmares, there is just a lot of absolutely silly shenanigans you can get into with essentially having infinite nightmares because you can copy your nightmare into more nightmares and then you can use those nightmares to copy anything you want. So it can be a little clunky at first, but the idea is when you can play more copies of your most powerful cards, you can make combats very very easy next up we have phantasmal killer this is actually a one cost card not two old patch detail there and it gives you the ability to double your attack damage on the next turn if you upgrade it this will become a free card to play obviously not all of the silent decks are going to lean heavily on physical damage because of her poison and often you may feel that having a card that takes effect next turn is a bit too slow generally speaking you want your cards to do things this turn you want to get the benefit of that energy you spend as quickly as possible but i think Phantasmal Killer really shines in decks that have the ability to continue drawing many, many cards per turn, small decks that draw quite consistently, so that you have a much higher chance of drawing it on consecutive turns. If you can play it on turn one and turn two, then that means you're going to be doing double damage on turn two and turn three. So. Drawing this as often as possible is the best way to maximize the buff that you're going to get out of this. I'm going to throw this as a solid B tier card. And I'm going to put it right there. Next up we have Storm of Steel. This is previously two cost, now it is one cost. And it will allow you to discard your entire hand and replace them with shivs. If you upgrade Storm of Steel, they will be Shiv Pluses. They do six base damage each. I'm going to throw this in a tier. I think I have misused this card for a long time, and I'm just 
recently starting to get a better handle on it. I was always a little disappointed by Storm of Steel and how I was using it because I wanted to maximize the damage by playing it with the largest possible hand, etc. But I often felt like I was being put in conflict. Other things I wanted to play, powers I needed to get set up, and I felt like I was not getting as much out of this card as I should, but I think that was my own misunderstanding. And now, the way I look at it is this is very much a finisher kind of card. Something like a Ragnarok for Watcher, perhaps, um, you know, a big Tempest from Defect, something like that, where it isn't necessarily a card that you're always trying to play every time you draw it. This is a card that you want to use when the moment is right, when you have worked the enemy down, when you have played all of your accuracies, your terror, etc. And if you can get that hand nice and big, you can finish the enemy very quickly. That is where I think Storm of Steel really shines. The problem is that, you know, of course, you cannot draw after you play this, so you need to watch your energy, you need to watch your card order when playing. It's a little hard to balance, but I think if you wait for the correct moment, this can be a great way to just end a combat quickly. Next up, we have Tools of the Trade. This one cost power will allow you to draw an extra card and discard a card from your hand at the start of each of your turns. I absolutely love this. It upgrades to be a zero cost card. I'm going to throw this right next to Malaise near the top of A tier. The Silent loves to draw and discard her Silent exclusive relics like Tingsha and Tough Bandages and Flying Kite. Just absolutely love to see this. Drawing more is always great, and this works especially well when you have something like Reflex or Tactician in the deck that are asking to be discarded. Even if you don't, I still think it is very, very good in its functionality. Just being able to see more cards each turn is super powerful. So, love to have tools of the trade in just about any deck. Next up is Unload. This one cost attack will deal 14 damage and then it will discard all non-attack cards in your hand. I'm gonna throw this at the bottom of B tier. I think the damage is okay. I think the discard looks really interesting, but often doesn't really end up that way. It can work really well if you do have those silent relics. It can work really well if you have something like the tactician or reflex in your hand. But a lot of the other skills you generally want to play and it feels like unless you have a super large hand with those silent relics, you're probably going to play your skills first and then finish your turn by playing unload and it's just kind of 14 damage. It's all right. It kind of depends on the deck you're running. It kind of depends on the relics that you have in your relic bar. So for those reasons, it's B tier. And finally, of course, we have Wraith Form. This three cost power will give you two stacks of intangible and at the cost of losing dexterity continuously after that. It's not just losing decks for one or two turns. This is a card that I think I personally and a lot of other players are a little intimidated by. The high cost and the fact that there is this very permanent and 
potentially debilitating debuff makes this really, really hard to get your mind around as a new player. That being said, absolute best silent card in the rare card pool. It will make the most dangerous, highest damage turns in the game much easier. This really benefits from something like well-laid plans so that you can hold on to it, make sure that you have it on the turn you need it, or perhaps Runic Pyramid. You really love to see this with something like Nightmare, because if you have multiple Wraith forms and you can continue to get the intangible buff, which reduces all incoming damage to one, then it doesn't matter if you are losing dexterity. This even works really well if you already have something like Apparitions. There is no such thing as too much intangible in a deck, so if you've got Apparitions already, this is just more Apparitions. Absolutely love Wraith Form. Maybe the best form card when we're talking about, you know, this very, very expensive three cost powers, demon form, echo form, diva form, etc. This might be the best three cost form rare power of any character. So if you have not taken Wraith Form, if you think it looks a little scary, a little hard to use, a little hard to benefit from, just give it a shot. I swear, if you try it out, I think you will quickly learn how valuable this is and how little the dexterity buff debuff will hurt you. In the hallway fights, those should be ending so quickly that the dexterity debuff won't matter. You will need to be a little more careful in boss fights and against the heart. You may need to time it more carefully, but that is also why you are looking for things like Nightmare or well-laid plans or runic pyramid so that if you get it on a turn you don't need it you can either keep a hold of it or copy it and get a whole bunch of them and that is it for the silent card tier list series i don't think i'm going to jump into a defect tier list right away i think i may try to do some other kind of general guide tips and tricks Maybe what the hell is up with that? Maybe some sort of achievement guide. If there's any questions you guys have, anything you're curious about, please let me know and I will add it to the list. The main thing to take away from these tier lists, again, is this is not a 100% all the time objective list. This is mostly just a way for me to describe which cards are most often very useful, most often very effective and powerful because of the wide number of ways they can be used. Some cards simply have more opportunities to be useful than others. So please keep that in mind. The context matters. Even the worst card, lowest D tier card can find a way to shine and really show you how different relics, different cards, different potions, you know, and even the enemy you're fighting make a huge difference. So you can't just look at a tier list and say, oh, that's always take or that's never take. You still need to keep that overall context in mind. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. It does mean a lot to me. Please drop a like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching Ruckus Gaming.